A lot of the marketing pitches we see is what I people talk of greenwashing, we talk of green exaggeration. <laughs> uh, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, that could be the headline for this uh, discussion. We need the VCs and the financing industry to also understand deep impact, right? In a positive way. Not, not the movie Deep Impact. But, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was a movie, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs>
um, the, the historical emissions, the historical pollutions, which people kind of tend to write off as, a hey, water under the bridge, let's look ahead. But it's not water under the bridge because a lot of damage has been done. Mm. Right? So you've got to, much like a human body, you've got to first fix that body. Mm -hmm. right? um, so we say, okay, how do you restore uh, the, the environment? How do you maintain that environment? And then how do you rejuvenate that environment? Right? That's how we kind of look. So uh, in, in solving and delivering a solution, it's a sum total of policy, uh, economic models, new business models, new financing strategies, new technologies. Come all the way to the other end, you've got a technology company that says, look, well, we're great in, great in circular economy and I can recover this much gas from the water or this much resource from the water. Um, and, and a lot of the marketing pitches we see is what I, people talk of greenwashing, we talk of green exaggeration. Uh, uh, That's pretty accurate. Yeah, that could be the headline right. for this uh, discussion. Uh, <laughs> right. And, and uh, you know, technology company says, we're doing this and we're going to solve the world's problem. Right. right. Yes, you are a cog in the wheel. You are not the cog in the wheel. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and that's where the machinery breaks down, right? So, so I think uh, what we realize in my 20-year journey on economic development, we realize is we need new management cadre coming out, which is very multidisciplinary. Um, that's what it's beginning to emerge in the, in the management consulting world, which says, oh, we tell you and teach you sustainability, and now at least there's a chief sustainability officer. I don't know what they do yet, but uh, there is one <laughs> in, in, uh, in most organizations. Still uh, work in progress, uh, yeah. But look, it's a good start, but I think it's the, it's the boardroom that needs to understand that sustainability has got to go into your DNA, and you can't just greenwash it, and you can't put a plaster on it, and, and changing DNA is not easy. So, um, um, so yeah, we sit at the at absolutely at the at the problem end, and then try and bring the best in class solutions in each of those segments, and and stitch them up together. So uh, hopefully, a lot more of us will start to emerge, and and uh, <coughs> well, we were talking about, you know, you've got to have faith in humanity. You've got to back yourself up. Right. right. Time and time again, we've gone through adversities and we've we've come out of it, but. Uh, you know, COVID is a classic case in point. Sure. Normally takes 10 years for any drug or vaccine to, to get through. And, um, you know, people pull together. And we got a vaccine out in nine months. Right? So why, why the question is, if there is that capacity in the system to get a vaccine out in nine months, right? Why in normal times does it take 10 years? The, yeah, the, the lack of urgency. Right. And, and, and the same, same is true for climate change. So we are one world event away, hopefully we don't get it, from that urgency to kick in. So we're trying to push and accelerate this kind of message that interdisciplinarity, multidisciplinarity is the new <coughs> management construct mm -hmm. to deliver on environment and sustainability. It's really interesting, isn't it? Because you mentioned during, during, you think during COVID, how much new regulation was passed, the ability to act, governments accessing pools of money to make things happen. Things happen so quickly within the, the space of eighteen months, and yet you think climate change is an existential threat. And yet, we're, 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 we we sometimes joke about the setting of twenty fifty targets. Oh, yeah, it's 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 a dark, it's very dark humor that you know. The private sector, in part, is driven by pledges and commitments that are so far out that it, it's, it truly is kicking the can down the road. It is, you know, sure, I'll make a pledge for 2050, and the reality is that, you know, you just sort of plot along along the status quo trajectory. It, you brought a couple, of, a couple of things that are really interesting that resonate. One is the reverse engineering piece. I mean, you know, what... What I see and I know others see is that it's, it's really a hammer looking for a nail. You know, it's the, I have a solution and then I'm going to go speak to a customer. Well, what, speak to the customer, whether it's the public sector or private sector, and then figure out 
what the solution should be, whether it's an innovative business model or technology or you know, a, a roll up of technologies, you know, what, right. So in, in some ways, when I listen to you, it, it sounds like you're sort of running an idea lab, which is th these are the wicked problems. Mm -hmm. Now let's go find the pieces and put them together or create something new. And I believe that's where we need to go as opposed to, you know, the water technology hubs and accelerators that you see that are, you know, really smart people, really innovative technologies, but they can't really connect to a customer base to scale as quickly as we need them to scale. So yeah. Yeah. I like the telescope image. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, just to add on that point, um, I was telling somebody that there is all the tech in the world, and frankly, there's all the money in the world. <laughs> the now, uh, how do you find that tech, right? Um, you don't go find it in, you know, capitals, uh, the Silicon Valley uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> analogy. Well, you go find them in research labs, you know, five right. hours out of Tokyo or three hours out of Auckland, um, because every country is facing water, energy, food crisis, right? Yeah. So there's innovation happening globally. And... Um, uh, um, and you look at innovation, same innovation in one part of the world, you know, tens of millions have been spent, and the same innovation in another part of the world, right. with you know, 100,000, 200,000 spent, and exactly doing the same thing. Right? And uh, so there's a lot of wastage and there's a lot of redundancy. Um, getting technology out into, into the world. Uh, and what I see quite often, and also also at Wex, that you know, a lot of the companies say you know, we, we come from a big developed country, and uh, our market is EU or our, our market is US and North America. But then that's not solving the world's problems, right? No, it's that's, that's solving a very local problem. And and where's demand, consumption demand? going to come, it's going to come in India and China and Africa and the Latin America and Southeast Asia. And we don't want them to make the same mistakes that we made mm -hmm. right, in, in the developed world. So why don't we get that technology out there? But the rate of what I call technology diffusion is abysmal. <laughs> and it's abysmal because um, <clears throat> innovation rate has gone through, you know, accelerated, but diffusion rate has actually slowed down because we're now um, trying to solve, uh, like Tom said, existential problems where you have to develop engineered solutions for nature and climate and they don't normally sit in the same camp, right? right. Um, and um, there's policy, there's regulation, so you can't have throw bricks and mortar and electromechanical monstrosities at, at nature and climate. Um, uh, but if we have to get people to consume in a sustainable manner, um, we also have to look at or design, embed in, in our technology marketing design that, yes, we are developing a technology for the world, which means your commercial models will be diametrically opposite. Mm -hmm. right? and, and that's what a lot of the, uh, the commercial officers and the CFOs of technology companies are not getting, and, and it's our duty to kind of uh, educate them that, look, if you're developing a technology, you're doing so in a regulatory construct where the so-called market, and so in the case of water, let's say, per cubic meter tariff availability or a gate fee availability is, is pretty well defined. Uh, I was talking to somebody, they said, look, even within EU, there's a... <coughs> price disparity of one euro 50 to a cubic meter to 10 euros a cubic meter. But go to Africa, you'll be lucky to get 20 cents mm -hmm. a cubic meter. Now, now right. you, you've developed your commercial offering on, on <coughs> one euro 50 or two euros a cubic meter. Right. Now right. you now all of a sudden asked to reduce that by 90%. Well, you're, right? you're not relevant for the market. You're not yeah. relevant for the market. The technology is, your commercial model it, isn't, it, right? And that's where you know, what I call green exaggeration, that people are saying we're solving the world's problems. 
no, you're not solving the world's problems because you are you are just solving a problem to to make your investors happy, your your your, your, your venture capitalists happy, right, right, right. right? Because they're saying, well, forget forget those countries. Let's go to the premium market segment. Right. right. Which it, it, yeah, we see that in the U.S. It's you know how many startups from other parts of the world look at the U.S. market, and it's you know that's where we need to be. That's where our investors want us to be, and. It, it turns out it's a lot more problematic than you know the investors thought or the the, the tech leaders thought. So I, I was going to ask you um, how much of the diffusion challenge and, and the slowing is how we fund startups because you know we were talking about uh, you know everyone wants to be a unicorn of course well of course because they're driven by VCs that see that as the holy grail essentially right, right. so. Is, is that a big part of the problem that you see? And if so, how do we change that? How do we break that apart? Um, it's, it, it, it really depends on um, what your fundamental vision is. Are you, are you developing that technology because you're just catching that tailwind? Mm -hmm. Or you're developing that technology, whether it's tailwind or headwinds, I've got to go in that direction, which means I've got to solve the climate problem. And if you're just catching the tailwind, your entire journey is from Series A to Series B to Series D, right? That's it. Right. Uh, and all your decisions... That's the strategy, are, right? right? <laughs> well, go through yeah. the motions. Yeah. Yeah, right. um, and, um, and I see a lot of the companies now sticking just digital for the sake of sticking, you know. Mm -hmm. um, because, well, dig you know, water is not delivered digitally, right? Someone's got to, you know, put a pipe in. <laughs> and, and, and deliver that water. It's not going to happen digitally. You can understand it digitally, whether it's being delivered or not. And, um, so, so you're seeing a lot of innovation coming through in the digital part of the segment, but coming to market, but not a lot of innovation coming to market in the actual physical engineering world. Right. So, so part of the problem is: Are we trying to solve the problem, or are we just trying to raise money? So. So, so long as we are very clear in our conscience, you know, I, I, I have no problem with anyone because eventually water flows downhill. Good technologies that deliver will flow downhill, will reach the market, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and our, collectively, our goal is to make the path clear uh, or, or smoother for those type of technologies. It's a very simple litmus test. You, you apply, uh, like I said, you know, are you ready? So we have a technology readiness level scoring methodology as mm -hmm. commercialization readiness scoring methodology. And, and we've added another layer on top, which is, are you impact ready as well? Are you able to create more jobs, more livelihoods? Right. right. Uh, you know, are, you, are you helping better governance in, the, in, in uh, according to the ESG principles? So, uh, so again, you know, moving companies away from greenwashing to actually trying to embrace and embrace sustainability in their DNA. Um, that's a very simple litmus test. So you ask the companies, well, will you go to uh, South Africa? Uh, no, right? Or you ask another company, will you go to South Africa? Absolutely, mate, we will go anywhere. You know, we don't know how, how to get there, but if you can help us, we will. And that's, that's the answer, right? So how do you, right. uh, how do you test, you know, or separate people who, who are just gonna make money or focus on making money to people who are going to actually solve the problem. So. And, yeah. and quantifying impact, that's so important. I mean, there was a lot of chatter about that, but really very few uh, you know, investment funds really, really focus on quantifying impact. I mean, we, we get that question all the time, which and all, many times from NGOs, which is how are you going to quantify impact? And you know, it's it's not just that you made an investment in a technology company that says they're delivering impact. It is what are the KPIs, and how do you evaluate that on an annual basis to know that you're actually making progress, as opposed to well, we we said this at the beginning, and that's good enough. We um, we had a conversation last night around um, there's some incredible sort of engineering solutions that perhaps you get founders, entrepreneurs from academia who really have something that could, that's proven robust, but actually the ability for them to raise money to scale to turn into a business is where it falls down. So um, you mentioned in the start about how many millions, there's a lot of money being available. So 
it can be a bit frustrating when you see companies coming up that are doing, you mentioned this huge exaggeration, that have the ability to raise tens and tens <laughs> of millions. And then after a couple of years, we don't tend to hear from them. And you think those, that money could have actually scaled a solution that could have generally kind of uh, been a game changer. So, yeah, I think the way you're looking at this, Amber, is, is a really interesting perspective, actually assessing the impact of the solution, actually looking at the market fit, asking the right questions. Um, so yeah, we, we really appreciated your your input here at Wex. Great to great to meet you and, and wish you the, the best of luck moving forward. Uh, your time here in, in Valencia and uh, the rest of the projects you're working on. Appreciate your time. Great, thank yeah. you, Tom. Thank you. Well, no, it's been it's been fascinating to be on on this discussion. I, well, I think we ought to have more of these. But there's one message I will I will uh, give before we kind of leave today is. Uh, um, you know, embed sustainability in your DNA. So when people now talk of deep science, mm. right? We need the VCs and the financing industry to also understand deep impact, right? In a positive way, you know, not not the movie Deep Impact, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, that's that was a movie, movie. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The big asteroid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a fascinating, very interesting new genre or or style of management that's that's beginning to emerge, and and it's it's uh, it, it's best learned on the field, right? It's not it's not best learned in the classroom or or in the boardroom. So get out there, try to f solve the problem, and you will find a way out, right? So. Yeah, it, you know, I, I know we we're going to wrap up in a minute, but you brought up another interesting point here about sustainability as a strategy, not ESG as a strategy, and we had that discussion. Uh, earlier in the week that uh, we're really obsessed with ESG reporting and believe that's a strategy and believe that's an impact and embedding sustainability into your business strategy or you know your your uh, economic development strategy is, is really where we need to be and in some ways I think we need to take a step back and, and focus on on that piece of the puzzle as opposed to the tail wag and the dog. I think that's a, that's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Summit, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank thanks you so for, much uh, for being a first guest on the the stream on the road. We enjoyed uh, speaking with you, and yeah. Uh, yeah, let's let's keep up the conversation. I think that's the main thing, right? Yeah. Let's, let's uh, get things done. Yeah. Love it. Great stuff. Great. Thank you. Well, great to meet you. Cheers.